All right, we are going to, I keep saying, because we've looked at Abraham and Sarah, last week had Mother's Day message, uh, you know that it's a, a year ago, I think, that we left off, it was quite a while back we left off, we have some chapters to finish in the book of Revelation, so we will be getting there, we will be getting there, but... This is something I was meditating on, thinking about, that I wanted to share, and it is, the message this morning is, uh, beware of wrong love. Beware of wrong love. In 1 John chapter 5, because you know the world says, uh, love, 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 and the, even the, lib the liberal they smoke screen everything by saying, we are the most loving. And you, uh, uh, if you're against us, if you don't agree with us, you are hateful. And, you know, we know what love is all about. And we are all about love. And love is always good and always right. And, well, that's what we're going to think about this morning. Um, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also, that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Love, true love, biblical love, is all about keeping God's commandments. The Bible is very clear about that. The Lord Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Interesting that verse 4 here falls with the thought, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And all their false beliefs and all their... Um, Wicked love. Is that such a thing? You young people, listen close. You know that love is, you say, love is always right. Love is never wrong. Is that true? Well, we're going to look at this morning that uh, many times, many times, so the Bible says that love is wrong. Really? Really? Many times the Bible says that love is wrong. And we are to love the Lord and keep his commandments. And so it's interesting this verse follows those strong words on the love of God. The love of God is that we keep his commandments, that it would say, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. There's popular sayings, a lot of popular sayings about love, uh, such as, all you need is love. All you need is love. No, you need the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Well, I believe, I believe in love. Well, you better believe in the Lord Jesus as your Savior is what you better believe in. Or you have the saying, love makes the world go around. Love makes the world go around. Well, God set the world in space. God makes the world go around. Uh, about love will find a way. Love will find a way. Well, might be the wrong way, so you better watch out. Might be the wrong way. It's not love that is... Focus on God and his word. How about love is the answer? Sometimes it's the wrong answer. It is the, sometimes it is definitely the wrong answer. How about trust your intuitions and be guided by love? I thought we were supposed to be guide, guided by the truth of God's word and his Holy Spirit. Because many, many times in Scripture, the Bible says that love 
is wrong. Does it really say that? Yeah. And we better have our heads screwed on right lots of times. And we're going to list them. This is just a really simple message. This is just, uh, you got to be ready here. We're going to turn to all kinds of passages. And all it is is a list of um, times when love is wrong. Uh, when God says love is wrong, uh, we'll be getting there. Um, the world says love is blind. Love is blind. Is that supposed to be a good thing? The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. And that's wonderful that you can overlook uh, or forgive, forgive sin. And, but as far as love is being blind, uh, is God blind? The Bible says God, God is love. God is love. He's true love. He is truth. Should love be blind when God is all seeing? God sees everything. Don't you want to see everything uh, in uh, bringing up children? You want to see what's going on and watch what's going on and, um, and see also when God says to forgive and also when God says to discipline, uh, you want to see is anyway, love is, they say love is by, how about love conquers all? How about the only thing in this world having, the only thing in this world worth having is love? That sounds like something out of the, the hippie movement back in the 60s. The only thing in this world worth having is love. When the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. And the Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. You know, there's more than, there's a lot more, a lot more than love. Uh, someone said, love is the beginning of knowledge. Love is the beginning of knowledge. And all this type of talk, all this type of talk goes right into, we're not just picking on political liberalism. It is theological liberalism, which has actually spewed out this corruption of political liberalism and that uh, it's just all about love. Everything's love, love, love. Don't criticize don't say anything's wrong because that's unloving. And so today, anything goes. And uh, anything goes to the extent that you can't even uh, get your head wrapped around the wicked things that are coming out in the news. And they'll just say, well, you're hateful if you don't, if you don't accept this and you need don't you know about love? Don't you know about love? Don't you know about loving people? Don't you know about love? Well, we know, we know that love, we, we, we know what God says about love. And we're going to look at, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to turn through our Bibles. I have... 16 times here when God's word says that loving is wrong. You see, loving? How could loving ever be wrong? 16 times when the Bible clearly tells us that love is wrong. So, just jot these down. Because uh, you'll, save, you'll save a lot of time than having to look them up. I went through uh, several hundred verses Oh, you because I, I googled, you know, love in the Bible, and it was several hundred verses, but I was picking out ones when God said love was wrong. Love was wrong. First one, uh, loving the world is wrong. Number one, loving the world is wrong. And we know that's one of our memory verses. And first John 2, 1 John 2, 15 says, Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love is so severe, it is so severe to love the world. So if your love, your affections are set on the world, 
God says that love is wrong. And if your affections are set on the world, then you don't, really don't love God. It says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. What could be the result of, of loving the world? 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 in verse 10. Apostle Paul says, For Demas have forsaken me, having loved this present world. Here was a Christian that he had the wrong love. He loved the world instead of loving God supremely, and he forsook Paul, forsook God's work. Secondly, secondly, and like I said, this is very simple, and we know, we know a lot of these, uh, and perhaps we realize all of them because uh, they just make sense from if we know a holy God, if we know uh, the true love of God, we know that love for uh, any kind, anything wrong is wrong, but the world doesn't know that. They just say, love everything. Just love everything. No. No. Sex, so second, loving money is wrong. God says love and money is wrong. Uh, we know 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, says for the love of money is the root of all evil. And turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, in verse 10. And I hope that you are... Uh, with me this morning, looking at these verses, and just uh, to stress that we got to have the right kind of love. We have got to have the right kind of love. In Ecclesiastes 5, verse 10, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. He that loveth abundance, uh, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. You know, it's just, but you know that the world loves money. And you know that uh, liberalism that tries to put on this front like they're so loving. Well, yeah, they are. They really love your money. They really love your money. They want it. It runs on envy and greed. And thirdly, thirdly, loving self is wrong. You know, the Bible clearly says love and self is wrong, and though uh, there's magazines out, you know, Self Magazine and Psychology Today and all this garbage that comes out from the world, that you need to, you really need to love, you really need to love yourself. God warns about that. Turn to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. These are dangerous days we live in. They are such dangerous days. Uh, so dangerous for our children. We need to teach our children, don't swallow the devil's lie that love, 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 love. You're, you're not loving if you say something's wrong. You're not loving if you don't agree with what we say. And you're hateful and you're unkind. No, God's love is true love. And you don't know uh, how socialism has murdered millions of its own people all the, all the time saying that, you know, if you're not with us, if you don't agree with us, you're not loving. No, if you don't agree with God, if you don't agree with God, then that's when you're truly not loving. And God says here, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of their own selves. Look at uh, Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. The Lord Jesus made it so clear that when you come to him, 
you are denying yourself. Apostle Paul said, I die daily. Uh, Galatians tells us that they which are Christ have crucified themselves, crucified themselves with the sinful, uh, how does it put it, with the sinful affections. You, you crucify yourself. Uh, you die daily. Uh, the Christian life is against loving self. And though the whole world might cry out and be teaching our kids, you really have got to love yourself. That's, uh, that's the whole culture that is heard in America is everybody's got to love themselves. And now they don't love their neighbor and they don't love God. And those are the two greatest commandments. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 34, it says, When he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. But whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Those that are loving themselves and life is all about themselves, life is about whatever will make them happy, whatever will prosper them, in the end, they're going to lose. They lose because they never laid down their life, repented of their sin, turned from their own sinful life, and received Jesus as their Savior. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. But whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, gospels, the same shall save it. Loving self is wrong. Number four, turn back to 2 Timothy chapter 3. As you go down this list, uh, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud. When you get down the list in verse 4, where it says traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of loving pleasure Loving pleasure more than loving God is wrong. Love is, we're just trying to stress God's word this morning. Just trying to stress what God says is that love is not always right. It's just not always right. And love is not what makes the world go around. It is God. God's principles, God is in control, God is going to have the last say, the last word, and God says that loving pleasures more than God is wrong. So if you love sports or music or hobbies or uh, computer games or Food, partying, boating, fishing, what, uh, whatever you want to throw in there, whatever your pleasure may be, if you love that and put that before God, then that's the wrong love. That's the wrong kind of love. And someone has said, tell me what you love, and I will tell you what you are. Tell me what you love. And I will tell you what you are. You could say, tell me what you love, and I'll tell you what kind of Christian you are. What do you love? What do you love? And God help us not to love the pleasures we live. We've got more pleasures than, than ever. It is just amazing. It is just amazing the luxuries the things that we have today, and we have got to love God more than, uh, more than all the world can offer to love God. Um, look in Psalm, Psalm chapter 4. Good question, God asks. God asks, he says, in Psalm chapter 4 and verse 2, O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity? All these pleasures, so many of them are just vain. It's just 
emptiness is vanity. And here, how long will you love vanity? It's not good. It's not right. Turn to Proverbs chapter 21. The Bible makes it so clear that love can be wrong. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17, it says, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. I got a good friend that years ago, he was buying uh, snowmobiles and four-wheelers and boats and guns and on and on and on. And I knew that he was making three more, three, at least three times as much money as I was. Because I wasn't making hardly anything. But he would say that I can't even buy a pizza on a Friday night because I've got so many bills to pay. Well, don't let pleasures don't get don't let pleasures uh, control you. God warns that he that loveth pleasure that's not a good thing. Put pleasure in its proper perspective. I love God to love God above everything. Uh, just love Him, and then He'll give you that proper perspective. Uh, the pleasures that He blesses you with. You just thank him and you're content. And, but the Bible says, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man, and he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Number five, turn to, well, we're in Proverbs. We were, I just closed. Uh, turn to Proverbs chapter one. This is an interesting. This is interesting. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22, God says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Well, that's interesting. Loving simplicity is wrong. Well, what is, what is it talking about, sim simplicity? Well, it's this attitude that, you know, I'm just happy where I am. I just love being what I am. I just love being who I am. I just love uh, the simple. Don't don't confuse me. Don't bother me. Don't make me think about this uh, receiving Jesus as my Savior. Don't make me think about uh, what the Bible says and the truth of the Bible. Uh, don't make things more difficult for me. I just love to keep it simple. And God says... It's wrong. Loving simplicity is wrong. Uh, not wanting to read the Bible, not wanting to learn about Jesus, not learning, wanting to learn about God, it's wrong. But the world loves it. They love it. That's what God says. Number six. This is, since we're in Proverbs, turn over to Proverbs chapter 20. This is interesting. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13. God says, love not sleep. Do you like sleep? So I think it's okay to like sleep because it's a gift from God. God says that he helps you to sleep at night. You trust in him. You look to him. And he gives you rest. He giveth his beloved rest. Uh, we know that um, Jesus even was napping in the boat when the disciples were toiling, working away, trying to get that boat safe. But to love sleep so much that you're knocking on doors, inviting people to church, and they say, that's my day to sleep in. Well, it's going to hurt you. It says, love not sleep, thou shalt come to poverty. Or teenage boy uh, supposed to be working, get a, getting a job, or even a man today, because young men don't seem like they're growing up, and to sleep, to love sleep, well, that's wrong. Can love be wrong? Yeah. 
Many times God says love can be wrong. Number seven, turn to Psalm 109. Interesting, the Lord says in Psalm 109. It's sad, it's talking about the Lord's enemies. And it says in Psalm 109, verse 17, as he loved the cursing, so let it come upon him. People love cursing. They must. They'll stand right there. They'll stand right there in the garage or in Walmart, uh, wherever, and just curse, curse, curse. And they must like it. And God says, he that loveth cursing, so let it come unto him, as he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him, as he clothed himself with cursing. You know anybody like that? They clothe themselves with cursing? And they, they're proud of themselves. They're proud of themselves that they can talk tough. They can talk tough, and they're, they're their own man, and they can talk any way they want to talk. And God says they love it. And the world has this idea that love, you can, never, you can just love whatever you want. Just love whatever you want, and it's all right. If I love pleasure, if I love money, if I love myself, it's okay. No. Love. It's, it's, uh, God's word is so wonderful and so perfect. It shows us a holy, perfect, righteous love. And the Lord Jesus displayed it on the cross. And we want to love like Jesus loved. And we want to love what Jesus loves. And we want to uh, love the Lord Jesus. And, but just like Satan perverts everything, he can pervert love. And uh, loving, loving cursing is wrong. Number eight, loving, well, let's turn to it, Second, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Now follow closely on this, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 19, and Jehu is coming to Jehos Je Je Jehoshaphat, and it says, Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? That's wrong. And it's so wrong that it says, Therefore is wrath upon them from before the Lord. So number eight is, now follow me, make sure you get this right, because we know for God so loved the world, God does love the ungodly, but the sense of the passage is, is the sense of Jehoshaphat had linked up with Ahab. If you look back in chapter 18, makes it clear, verse 1, make sure you note this. I don't want to confuse anybody. I don't want you to leave and say, well, pastor said, you're not supposed to love the ungodly. Well, I'm just saying God said you're not supposed to love the ungodly as in to link up with them, yoke up with them, and work with them. God said it. And chapter 18, verse 1 says, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and join affinity with Ahab. That's really sad. Really sad because Jehoshaphat had a lot of godly qualities. If you read down, uh, if we keep, go back to chapter 19, and we'll continue reading down, it says, uh, Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee. You know, God is so gracious. He doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Sometimes you see somebody, you, and you see that one fault they have, you say, forget them. Well, thank God he doesn't do that with us. 
uh, he said to Jehoshaphat uh, through, through Jehu, uh, he says, Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thy heart to seek God. And uh, down the passage, it says in verse 5, he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. He said to the judges, take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord. That would be principles there. He's going to have to use of loving what he should love and not loving what he shouldn't love. Uh, who is with you in the judgment? God's with you in judgment. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect to persons, nor taking of gifts. So when it says, Moreover in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat uh, set of the Levites, and of the priests, and of the chief fathers of Israel, for the judgment of the Lord, and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. And I would say that whatever you love, whatever you love, you do it in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Watch what you love. And the world today is saying you just love whatever. Love is always right. Love is always right. And you are hateful. You are, you are, you are scum if you don't love. What? And you can think of things, and I'll say, we want to make sure we're talking about, we're talking about linking up with, working with, supporting, so like homosexuality. We know God says it's an abomination. We know God loves people. God loves people. But God says you don't love them in such a way that you link up with them, support them, uh, and fall in with their agenda because it's wrong. It is just so every way contrary to the word of God. So is your love, you get the proper love, the proper love, uh, love, uh, number nine. Number nine, God says, turn to, well, turn to Isaiah chapter one, another love that is wrong. Another love is that is wrong. Isaiah one twenty three says, "Thy princes are rebellious." Well, we know something about that in the uh, United States of America. It says, thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts. What's that talking about? Well, the, you follow the money in D.C. and you'll find out how the corruption gets promoted. All the money, just take gifts, just take As long as we're getting money for this, as long as the school system's getting money, we get a lot of money to teach this. Yeah, but it's corrupt. Yeah, but it helps us to uh, heat the building. God says it's wicked. But we love getting all this money. We love. God says you better love. You know that love can be wrong. You better watch what you love. Turn to Micah chapter three. Number 10, so number nine is love and gifts is wrong, and God knew it would destroy a nation, destroy their politics, and destroy their, their standards of righteousness. Turn to Micah. Micah, chapter 3. How can this be? Micah, chapter 3. Begin, let's begin in verse 1. It says, And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? It's like God saying, you're supposed to know right and wrong. 
Is it something that you can't know anymore? Yeah. That's what the liberalism says, is you cannot know right and wrong. There are no absolutes. Everything is relative. Well, when did, that, when did this philosophy, when did this begin? Way back from the Garden of Eden, when Satan convinced Adam and Eve that, you know, you've got to doubt God, don't trust God. And ever since, and in Micah's day, the same problem is they can't judge. They couldn't judge. And our government and our schools, the world today says you can't judge what's right and wrong. And God says it, they were those who, verse 2, hate the good. Is that true? More and more. More and more society is hating the good. More and more society is going to hate those, just like they hated Jesus. And Jesus said, marvel not, marvel not if they hate you. More and more they'll hate the good. It's just like, you remember back in elementary days or junior high days when uh, you were with a bunch of friends and they decided to do something wrong and you say, well, I'm not going to do that. And they turn on you like, you know, you're weird. You're rotten. What's your problem? Well, it's still true today. You thought you got away from that in... Uh, if it's, you thought you, you passed that. No, the world still will say, as you're doing good, as you're doing right, the world's still going to say, what's your problem? Well, we love God. It's not a problem. We got it, you know, by his grace. We love God. We want to follow God. And it's wonderful. And you just don't know. You don't know the grace of God and the love of God. And, but it says here, they hate the good and love the evil. That's where we are. That's where the world is. Uh, God says loving evil is wrong. That's number 10. Number 11, turn to 1 Kings. 1 Kings. So, just to stress this morning... As you know, I've been stressing and stressing is that love is not always right. God makes it clear that many, many times love is wrong, and we are only as Christians to love in truth. We love in truth. That's what God tells us to do. In 1 Kings chapter 11, we see that a loving, number 11 is found in 1 Kings 11, loving in an immoral manner is wrong. You know, all these rock songs and country western songs, you know, uh, songs that say, it can't be wrong when it feels so right. Yeah, it can. God says it's wrong. Doesn't matter how great it feels to you. God says it's wrong. It's wrong. And then songs like... Um, it don't feel like sinning to me. Feels like love, an old country song. Well, that's wrong. It's a lie. And we got to make sure that we love the things God loves because God's love is so wonderful. And it's true. It's true. And so, 1 Kings chapter 11 says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, gathered... Uh, together with the uh, daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites and Ammonites and Edomites and Zidonians and Hittites of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Don't follow this immorality because it will turn your heart away from God. It will turn them to other gods. Well, that's happened. That's happened and still happening. It says, Solomon clave unto these in love. So he still did it. And it's wrong. It's wrong. Sexual immorality is wrong. Uh, whether it is 
uh, adultery, whether it's heterosexual, or, you know, the, the world gives all these terms, or homosexual, whatever it is, if it's not in God's will as in marriage, one man, one woman, then it's wrong. And so any kind of love outside of the will of God and what is right is wrong. Uh, it says in verse 4, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. So just watch what you love. Um, number 12. Number 12, turn to John chapter 3. John, like we said, there's a lot of things that God says to love is wrong. Uh, they can be wrong love. In John chapter 3, verse 19, beginning in verse 19. John chapter 3, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Well, I thought love was always a wonderful thing. Isn't love always, love, you know, you see signs, it's just one big love. Well, love, love, love. Um, well, are you talking God's love? Or are you just talking lust or vanity? Uh, says here that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So love and darkness rather than light is wrong. Turn to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Interesting that this verse, these verses are in Revelation, right at the end of the tribulation and uh, uh, world end events because of all that's happening today. Seems like this verse is fitting to be in Revelation, right at the close of the Bible. Uh, we can begin in verse 14. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That's having the proper love. Those that do his commandments. If you say, I love God. He saved me. Wash my sins away. You love him. You keep his commandments. You keep it. So it says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they, might, that they may have right to the tree of life, may enter in through the gates into the city. That is, they've kept his commandment to repent and receive the Lord Jesus. They love Jesus. And therefore, they uh, granted the right to enter into heaven. And then the Bible gives this warning in verse 15. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, you know, these words just don't fit into, you don't talk that way today because you just love everything. No. You gotta love the good and hate the evil, and the world has it the other way around. But it says, in idolaters, and what's that last phrase? And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. It's not just they, it's not just that they deceive and lie, it's that they love it. They love it. Beware, beware of what you love. And loving a lie. Loving a lie is wrong. In liberal theology, lies, 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 and they love it. And God says, beware, beware. Um, 
that is um, the way to hell. The way to hell. The way to heaven is to love God, the truth of God, what the Lord Jesus did on the cross. So, just a couple more here. Uh, turn to John chapter 12. Actually, three more. This is a short one. John chapter 12. This is what this is what fuels that's this is what fuels the media. Fuels the media as they encourage one another together. Um, this is it. In John chapter 12, let's start in verse 42. It says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogues. You don't want to be knocked out of the loop. You better not criticize or say, you better not say, God says this is wrong. God says that's not right. You better not say that because you'll get kicked out of the loop and you won't have a job anymore and uh, you won't be accepted anymore. And verse 43 says, For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. That's a wrong love. That's a wrong love. That's number 14. Loving the praise of men more than the praise of God is wrong. Now turn over to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We'll look at number 15. And Jesus, he's speaking. Uh, it says, he sp it starts out, then spake Jesus to the multitudes and his disciples. And we that love the Lord, disciples of the Lord, we've got to be so careful uh, not to love popularity or position. So number 15, loving popularity and position is wrong. It says in, well, we can skip down to uh, get right to the point here. In verse 16, Jesus says, he's talking about the the Pharisees, and how they loved the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, but be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father, like, uh, you know, spiritual father, as like the priest, the Catholic priest. God says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So love and popularity and position, the Lord clearly said it's wrong. I hope, especially you young people, I hope you young people are getting this down. When the world screams out, you're not loving, you can say, hey, I got this straight from the Bible. I am loving. I love God, and I'm keeping his commandments, and that's what true love is all about. And don't listen. Uh, don't, fall, don't fall for that line. You're not, you're not loving. Last one we want to see to me, is to me this is so powerful. We'll stop with this one. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. You may have thought of this one. It's so powerful. And we've referred to it many times through the years. It is lastly number 16. Loving family more than loving the Lord Jesus is wrong. Do you have the right love? Jesus said, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You young people, you love God more than your mom and dad. Isn't that something? Because it's good. 
The more you love the Lord Jesus, the more you'll love your parents. Then it says, and he that loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You parents, you love, you love the Lord more than your children. And you know how much you love your children. It's like, man, do you love your children. You can't even describe how much you love your children. Well, you love your God, the Lord Jesus, more. Well, then, if you, if you love your children more, Jesus said, you're not even worthy of him. He that taketh not his cross and falleth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. God help us to have the proper view, the true view, the true view of love. A lot of things we're not supposed to love, so be careful. And let's pray.